So I want to formally introduce myself to those that might not have uh, have uh, met me before, or um, some of you we might not have we might have met via email. Uh, but my name is Matt Maldonado, and I'm the Student Services Senior Manager um, for Tandon Online. So I help support you all um, and helping build community within the Cyber Fellows Program. Um, and I'm excited to kick off the fall uh, the fall semester in the 2021-2022 academic uh, school year with this event. Um, we're, we're virtual, uh, but I'm happy that we all, at least there's almost 300 of us here. It's really exciting to see you all here in the room um, and getting engaged. Uh, we have lots of opportunities throughout the year for you to, to take advantage of, and this is the, the kickoff for that. Um, as I said, we have a short program of, of speakers, um, but before we get into that, I just wanna introduce some folks uh, that are joining us today. So first, I want to really uh, welcome and congratulate the new students for your for getting admitted into the MS program and joining us here at NYU Tandon, um, where it's a it's a great achievement and it's a great program you're joining. We're excited to have you. Um, also, thank you uh, to the folks that are joining us um, that are continuing students and have been working hard through the program over the past, you know however many semesters. We have folks from every cohort, I think, in this room, uh, from the initial from, from the initial initial group from fall 2018 all the way to, to folks coming in today. Um, and it's exciting to have folks connecting across the country, and I, I think even some folks across the world. Um, so thank you all for taking the time to, to join us. Um, we couldn't do this without you all. There, there wouldn't be an event without, uh, without you all. I uh, also want to uh, thank the Tandon faculty and instructors who uh, are teaching the cybersecurity courses that took time to join us, are taking time to join us today, and they'll be, uh, they'll be hosting some breakout sessions after the event, or towards the end of the event, um, where you'll be able to connect with them a little bit more if you didn't get the chance during the breakouts, uh, the speed networking breakout sessions. Also, a very special thanks to folks from Bridgewater Associates. Uh, for the Bridgewater for the Bridgewater Scholarship, as well as um, Omkar and um, the other founders of the SNK Scholarship uh, that are here tonight to recognize those recipients, um, as well as our industry partners and advisory council members. Uh, we have folks from Bank of America and Con Ed and Estee Lauder, uh, IBM, Microsoft. TIA and so many other other uh, folks um, here tonight to join and hopefully you got to connect with a couple of them uh, potentially during speed networking and also folks that are in this are students from those organizations as well. Um, and last, um, a very important uh, welcome to uh, our OSIRIS lab, which is our student run cybersecurity research lab. You'll have the opportunity to connect with them at the end of the event uh, or at the last portion of the event as well during the breakout sessions to find out how to get involved with them. Um, and also to our, our guest speaker uh, for taking time to, to come and be the keynote, uh, Elizabeth Agosto, who you'll hear a little bit uh, from a little bit more later on this evening. Uh, now I would like to introduce and turn it over to our Vice Dean for Academics and Student Affairs, Nasser Mehmet. Hello, can you hear me, Mike? Okay, can you see me? Yep, okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, I guess. Maybe good afternoon for some of you, I don't know. But uh, so welcome, my hearty welcome to uh, the Cyber Fellows Program. Uh, Good to see you again, the, uh, the old students, but uh, a special welcome to the new ones. Uh, we have uh, almost 400 students joining us this semester. We almost have about 600 in the program already. So we will be reaching a group of thousand sort of experienced, well-trained cybersecurity professionals. And we started this, we started cybersecurity at NYU, right? More than 20 years ago. Uh, I started with in 1999, 2000 with the ISIS lab. We now call it the Osiris lab for obvious reasons. Uh, and from then onwards, we've been teaching cybersecurity. We started the cybersecurity center, CCS, which now spans multiple schools at NYU. And we have more than 75 PhD students who are engaged in cybersecurity research, more than a dozen faculty members, 
uh, about $5 million of research expenditure every year in cybersecurity. So uh, not only we are deep in research and creating new technologies and finding new ways to protect systems, but we also uh, have been a pioneer in education. And it, it was about four years back that the mayor, then mayor de Blasio, I guess still the mayor, uh, sort of announced that Cyber New York initiative where he wanted sort of 30,000 jobs in cybersecurity in, in, in New York City. And being one of the largest programs in the country, even then I said like, look, we have hundred some students, where are you going to find 30,000, right? And so we launched with the help of the New York City Cyber Command and, and, and encouragement by the city, the Cyber Fellows Program, with the aim of addressing this need, right? The need that the country has, the need that industry has of, of well-trained cybersecurity professionals. And, and I sort of salute you to sort of answering this call of duty to coming in and, and becoming a cybersecurity expert because you're the need of the hour, right? People like you are the need of the hour. And, and the program that we have created, I believe is one of a kind. Uh, it is going to be hard, it's not going to be easy, right? Uh, but there's certain principles, not only is it affordable and flexible being online, uh, but, but also it's been uh, created with industry partnership in mind. We believed in first from day one that uh, for the right educational experience, academia and industry need to get together, right? And design it with some cooperation. And we, we have done that, uh, more to be done, of course. We, we improve every year as we learn more from our in industry partners. Uh, but our industry partners also now offer badges. There's so many learning experiences that you can get. Just next month, there's going to be a two day cyber strike uh, exercise between the New York City Cyber Command and our students where they have a red team. You'll be defending a network, they will be attacking you. And it's all for free. The industry doesn't charge you. We don't charge the industry. Industry doesn't pay us nothing. We are all doing this because we know that this is the need of the hour, that the country needs cybersecurity professionals, industry needs cybersecurity professionals, and this is the right thing for NYU to do. And that's what, that's what made us start a program. It's such a steep discount. There is no other program at NYU which gives you a, a discount, even close to, to something like this, right? Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, 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 about the program a bit uh, later, right? But uh, let me not, I know you're a little bit behind uh, time, but uh, there, and there are many guests here today that uh, who uh, will be speaking to you and many students who will be recognized. Uh, so let me begin by introducing our sort of honored keynote speaker, uh, as, Liz, as Matt mentioned, Liz Agosto. Uh, Liz is the director of, uh, and the global chief operating officer for information security uh, at BNY Mellon, where she reports directly to the CISO. In her role, she leads business operations for the information, information security division, right? Uh, and, and she also has a passion for looking at issues related to diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion. And she has spent a lot of her professional life looking at issues like that, driving key changes and transformative, transformative initiatives, right? Uh, and, and she's been a champion of, of, of diversity, equity, and inclusion inside, both inside and outside the company. Uh, she's a co-chair of Europe Financially, Financial Advisory Council, a steering member of the firm's Diverse Tech Committee and the Latin Advisory Council. Uh, she is a member of the Hispanic Latino Leadership Forum, uh, the National Hispanic Corporate Council, and a member of the Association for Latino Professionals for America. Uh, in 2020, Liz was named the top 100 most influential Latinas in the nation by Latino Leadership Magazine. Uh, she's also, we are very proud to say, a member of our Cyber Fellows uh, Advisory Council. And we look forward to working with BNY Mellon to help shape the program, to help produce more talented engineers like you. Uh, and so Liz, I yield the floor to you. Sorry, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Hi, thank you, Nasser, for that incredible uh, introduction. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm so glad to be here today for you know this virtual celebration um, to kick off the you know the 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 academic year with the students, the new students, um, the faculty, the industry partners, and the staff. 
Uh, more importantly, I'm really thrilled uh, to be a part of this advisory council because um, you know I get to be a part of this incredible cyber community, which now you're all going to be a part of, right? As you embark on your journey uh, from an education and ultimately into the cybersecurity field. Um, and I'll let you know, I, I've had a, a great career, uh, fortunately, in the financial industry for over 25 years, um, the majority being in the area of risk management, marketing, client service, um, and companies like Lehman Brothers and Barclays. And although um, the COO aspect of, of the role was not new to me when I joined BNY Mellon, the technology field was. And I'll take you through a little bit really quickly of my story. Um, almost six years ago, I remember to the day I got a call from a recruiter that, it, 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 I mean, literally changed my life. Um, I remember him telling me how this role in cybersecurity, uh, this is a game changing role. This is an industry that's incredible. There's so much opportunity. There's potential. I mean, there's growth potential. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. Um, and, and I have to say he was right. Um, I've never really been a, a, a technical sort of a person. I could never imagine myself, oh, I'm an engineer or anything of that sort. Um, but I have to tell you, um, this role has been a game changer for me in ways I would never have dreamed of. Um, and at the time, it seemed like this overwhelming change for me. And I said, you know what, I have to kind of, you know, not allow the fear to get in the way. I'm going to go for this opportunity. Worst thing that can happen is I go into it. I don't like it. I can go back to risk. Um, so I made the bold decision to go for it. And I have to tell you, there is not a day that I have regretted making this decision going into this field. Um, I think NASA was right. Um, cybersecurity is such an incredible field. There's such demand. Um, if you think about it in this digital age, right, cyber plays such an essential role in everything that we do in our lives, right? Um, from ensuring online safety uh, to the safety of, you know, essential systems that, you know, support our daily lives like electricity, uh, uh, transportation, you know, financial institutions. And the beauty of it is that as a financial, as a uh, cybersecurity professional, you know, your work on a daily basis is to make sure that you keep um, critical infrastructure secure, right? You're securing, um, making sure that the organization has a, a, a good secure posture um, and you're gonna be constantly facing new challenges, um, new growth opportunities. Trust me when I tell you, you will not be bored. Um, and, you know, anyone coming into this industry has to have a curious mindset is what you need, right? Because um, our, our adversaries don't let us rest, right? They are every day coming to the table with new and more sophisticated, you know, threats in the environment. So there's nothing but opportunity here. Um, this, this program is amazing. And I'm happy to be a part of this program, because I think one of the most incredible things that at least for me, attracted me so much about uh, what is being done here as part of the cybersecurity program is that it's not just about giving you the tools and the learning, right? Because, you know, cybersecurity continues to evolve, you know, technology, as we go into emerging technologies, we have to continue to learn and grow. But it's that opportunity to build that sense of community. You're gonna have an ability to network with different people in, in different organizations from different um, industries who are all you know, looking to do the same thing, right? Which is to secure our environments. Um, what's great about it is, as I mentioned earlier, I come from a risk background and not really a technical background, but I was able to use my skills that I learned over my 25 year career um, and apply it to, to the cybersecurity field. And I have to tell you, it's been an incredible, incredible experience. Um, and, you know, I'll just say you've all taken, you know, this incredible step in investing in yourself by participating in the program. It's going to prepare you. It's going to give you the tools, um, but it's going to mean more than that right? It's like what you do after that. It's like continuing to network, continue to build um, on that community to continue also to think about, um, as Nasser mentioned earlier about my, my uh, me being an ambassador of diversity, um, we all have a responsibility. Um, and too much who, you know, to, to whom much is given, much is required, right? And so when I first joined cyber, the first thing that I noticed was that there weren't many women in cyber, um, there was an overall lack of diversity uh, in the industry at large. And me being me, I started to say, well, why is that? Why is it that people don't know about these incredible opportunities? If there's such a shortage, why aren't more people going for it? Why aren't more people learning about it? 
Um, and so I decided to sort of go on a quest and become a bit of a cybersecurity ambassador. So I've, so, you know, everywhere I go, I talk about, you know, how important it is because it is a world problem, right? We're, it's a world problem. It's not just an industry problem. It's not a financial institution problem. Um, it's a world problem. So I, I tell you that, um, you know, as you embark on this journey and as you learn and as you grow in this field, stay curious, right? Continue to learn, make sure that you, you know, seek out opportunities, learn from other people. Uh, just again, I can't stress the importance of, of staying curious and building sort of that community of experts that you can always go back to and talk to and learn from. Um, that's going to be so, so important, even as you, you know, graduate from the program as well, right? Because then there becomes that area of like, okay, where do I go? Where do I fit in? What do I really want to do? And there's so many opportunities in there um, in this field. For me, I, I would say that the biggest challenge when I first joined my organization was building um, our cyber team of professionals continues to be a big challenge today because we, we have a shortage of, you know, everyone's competing for the same talent. So think about what area and what niche, what area of expertise you wanna go into based on what, what are the things that interest you, which is something else that people don't really think about. Um, and, and always remember, take a look around and see what's missing, who's missing, who's not at the table, um, and, and just make sure that you keep diversity you know, in, in top of mind when you're building a cybersecurity team or when you're in a team, because, at the end of the day, cybersecurity is about people, right? The cyber defenders, the people who create the technology, the people that technology protects, that's why at the core of it all, the security teams need to be diverse um, because the problems that we're trying to solve in this industry, um, you know, is, is, is directly, you know, how we get the best security is to make sure we have different people, different mindsets thinking about these problems. Um, so if all the people in your um, team sort of think the same way, you're kind of missing out on, on, on understanding and problem solving capability that, that you'd have otherwise. And just remember, um, you all play a role in cyber careers. You have an impact to create awareness. I will tell you, um, make sure that you spread the word. Talk about the program to other people. Introduce them into the concept of what is cybersecurity. Raise that awareness amongst, you know, the groups that you surround yourselves with. Tell your children. That's the other thing is kids in schools don't really know much about it. Um, raise awareness about what it means to be in a in a cyber career and what it means to to be a cybersecurity professional and how important it is. Um, and I guess I'll, you know, again, I'll say I can't wait to see where all of you land. Uh, ultimately, I, I definitely I'll be part of that journey. I'll be around. So, you know, let's network, let's talk, let's, you know, get to know each other, um, you know, across, the, you know, as we as we embark on this um, on this mission, really, when you think about it. And I want to say thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to be here to talk to you today um, and spend a few minutes with you. Remember, learn, unlearn and relearn is really important. Be courageous, look around, raise awareness, and make sure that as you're embarking on this journey and you're, and you're in your professional lives that you see who's missing at the table and you make sure that you uh, seek out and pull people in. And I think that's pretty much all I can say. There's one last thing I'll say is um, there's a Chinese proverb that says, uh, teachers open the door, but you must enter yourself right? You have done that just by taking this first step and entering. So I will say, you know, onwards and forwards. Thanks again. And uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, wonderful advice. And, uh, and also, what a source of inspiration you will be to our students. And uh, the fact that you will be are available to network with them is really something we value a lot, right? Because one of the things you said that it's right on on what we are aiming for in this program is that we don't believe a master's program is simply doing 10 courses and taking a piece of paper and then saying for the rest of your life that you're a master, you have a master's degree. No, when you join a master's program, you join a community, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's the goal of Cyber Fellows to create a community, community of industry professionals who can advise like you, right? Uh, who can advise and mentor these students and, and we have built in many opportunities in the program for mentorship, and we are growing them every year. And that is our goal. We believe that uh, even after you graduate, you, uh, learning will not end with the acquisition of a degree, especially in cybersecurity. And we are here. The Cyber Fellows community will help each other, teach each other. In fact, we have Cyber Fellows students now teaching in the program. 
right? Which was, That's yeah. the dream, right? And, and basically right. we're going to create a community that helps and teaches each other. And, and uh, so thank you so much for pointing. Thank that you, out. thank you. That's, a, that's right. imperative. So just remember that, because that is the community is, it, it's, a, right. it's everything in this field, seriously. Right. And, and the second thing that Liz touched upon was diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, and we're proud to say that uh, the Cyber Fellows Program has uh, a much higher number of uh, uh, students from uh, women students, uh, from underrepresented minorities uh, than any other program uh, in, the, in the school. Uh, the numbers are not perfect. They should be better, I believe. Uh, and we are making every effort to make them better. So we have this year, 25% of the students coming in by women. It should be more than 50, but it's 25. And that's much better than what we see in our regular programs, right? So uh, at, the, at the master's level, and even the underrepresented students, the Latino students, uh, the African-American students, et cetera, uh, that also is about 25%, right? So we, we have a... a reasonable level of diversity, I would say, for a school like NYU. And we are, we, it's very important for us to grow that further. And, and share me, the secret. <laughs> I was going to say, just share the secret. That's like, that's the biggest, uh, the best advice. Keep sharing it. Just tell more people, tell more people. Tell, tell, tell more. more people, right. Yes. The ones who are in the Raise program, awareness. Right. And, and uh, we're also thankful to our partners, right? So the Bridgewater, for example, has uh, very generously endowed a scholarship for students. So the program, which was like 16, 17,000, I forget, uh, because the tuition goes, keeps going up every year. Uh, so uh, whatever that is, uh, Bridgewater pays half of it for to special students, right? So now the master's becomes only about eight or $9,000, right? The entire master's for the Bridgewater scholarship recipients. Uh, and these are given to students from underrepresented communities and minorities, right? So women in underrepresented communities. So for, in that regard, I'm, I'm very happy to introduce uh, Glenn Kinnan, who's the senior manager of governance, risk and compliance at Bridgewater. Uh, he manages approximately 160 billion in global investments for a wide array of institutional clients, including foreign governments, central banks, corporate and public pension funds, university endowments, and charitable foundations. Uh, Glenn began his career at Bridgewater as a lead developer in trading technology, graduated into enterprise technology governance, and is now responsible for the company's security governance, risk management, and compliance. He received his undergraduate degree in computer science from Harvard College and is a certified information security, system security professional. So, Glenn, uh, All right. we'll announce the, the Bridgewater Scholarship winners. All right, thank you, Nasser. And I've, I've never met Elizabeth before, but I do know it's really hard to follow her in a speech. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try to at least keep it short. Uh, my name's, uh, as Nasser said, Glenn Keenan. I've been at Bridgewater um, actually for most of my career, and I'm responsible for our security strategy, governance, and arch security architecture. Uh, two of my colleagues, Ravi Malarapu, who just got his PhD, and Kevin Glavin are here. I'm a manager, and these are the two guys who are actually do the real deal. They manage our security developments as well as our application security, respectively. So. Um, if you're lucky enough to have them in your focus room, hopefully you had a chance to talk with them. Um, uh, just a few words before we turn this over. Um, so we at Bridgewater are were lucky to be connected with Nasser several years ago. And we had two topics of mutual interest, two questions we shared that really apply to Bridgewater, NYU Tandon, and, and really the nation at large. The first question is how do we cultivate the next generation of security talent? It's an underpopulated field in a dangerous world. So how do we grow the field both in size and over time? And the second question we had is, how do we ensure the diversity of our field reflects the diversity of our country? It's, it's, it's a big mismatch. And, um, um, and how do we rectify that over time? So um, how do we grow the field and how do we diversify it? And so uh, we were lucky enough to work with Nasser to help fund the Bridgewater Scholarship for Minorities in Cybersecurity to try to make at least a bit of a dent in those questions. And um, I'm personally humbled by the success of the program. I, I didn't expect it to go this well. 
and I expected good results, but it's 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 past what I'd hoped for, and I'm I'm delighted. Um, I first came um, to one of these events in person a couple of years ago. I took the train to Brooklyn, and I met the students. I saw their resumes, and I got a sense of them as people as well as professionals. And they, you could tell they came in with um, determination and brains. And what the program gave them in addition was skills and community. And I don't know if that's a trifecta or a quadrifecta, but like it was, it was formidable what, what, what they left as. And I felt proud to have um, represented Bridgewater be a little part in that. I also felt a little bit um, insecure. It's I think a common feeling of how long until these smart uh, people start to see through me and, and uh, realize really uh, how special and unique they are. So, um, at Bridgewater, the goal of our program is to protect our company, our clients, and our internal ambition is to have the most effective security program in all of financial services. Not the biggest, not the most famous, but the most effective and thoughtful. And it's a tough goal. We know the core of that is to have great people. And we've, um, we've been fortunate enough to hire student, ex-students from Tandon to get us there. So um, the, the circle to, um, is closed and I hope some of them have, have learned from us as well. So um, um, I'm, I'm excited for all of you guys are going. It's an excellent program. And there's a part of me that's also a little bit jealous for kind of all you're gonna learn so quickly uh, over the next couple of months. So without further ado, I'd like to um, announce the recipients of the Bridgewater Scholarship for Minorities in Cybersecurity. And if my pronunciation is off, uh, my apologies. So I'll, I'll do my best. So um, should, I, should I just get started? Okay. Yes, please. Okay, the first one is Rebecca Cheng. Salome Fanta. Myri Gan Alaire. Ronald Gonzalez. Eden Kashi. David Nicholas. Dinara Satayeva, Jessica Stuber, Jennifer Weissmantle. And I believe Jennifer will say a few words. Is that right, Matt? Yep. Jen Jennifer, the mic's yours. Thank you. Thank you all. That was good, Glenn. I just have to say that. That was good. <laughs> I praise from you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Not sure if this thing's on yet or you can see me, but I'm going to think probably. So I guess I'll get started. Um, first, I wanted to thank Bridgewater for their incredible generosity. And I want you to know that as choosing me as a recipient, like, you really did a good thing and I hope to do a lot with that scholarship and I'm gonna get more into it in a moment here, but I just wanted to start by telling you a little bit about me and my background so you can understand like how big of an impact it is. So I grew up in poverty and I was set up to be probably like a bad statistic. I was in a single parent household. I um, sometimes didn't have electricity, didn't know where my next meal was coming from. And nobody ever talked to me about going to college. I didn't even know that it was a possibility for me, but I always wanted to. And I grew up with like the great PBS, which was like, you know, public broadcasting service. And I was introduced to people like Carl Sagan and Mr. Rogers. And they taught me that anything was possible. So a lot of my days I would spend in the library learning as much information as I could and just like finding that escape in education. And I learned that education would ultimately be my freedom. Uh, whenever I was 14, I basically worked until I started my bachelor's degree. And the only reason I was able to focus primarily on school was because I won a scholarship for my academic achievement and community involvement. Um, after that, I completed my degree and I was lucky enough to get the Cyber Fellow Scholarship as well, and now the Bridgewater. And I just want to like reaffirm how important that these opportunities are, especially for 
underserved communities and people like me. And I want to tell anybody out there who's like struggling or has like a similar scenario or just finds herself like down in the dumps that anything is possible if you believe in yourself and you have that determination. And also with incredible people like Bridgewater and um, the NYU Cyber Fellows, the other people who contribute to that as well. And the work that you're doing is very important. And thank you so much for this opportunity and for helping me. Thank you so much, Jennifer. This is what we live for in academia. Uh, uh, what brings us to school every day to work is the students like you. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. So next is uh, our more than an industry partner, but even a close friend and a supporter of mine, uh, Omkar. Uh, Omkar has been a long time supporter of the Cyberfellows program. He's our go-to guy. I'm in trouble, I need somebody for cryptography. I go to Omkar and say, hey, Omkar, do you know someone? Uh, and he's always there to help, right? Uh, really, really thankful to him. And more than just helping us with shaping the program, connecting us to other industry leaders, Omkar very sort of magnanimously sort of reached out and said, you know what, I will sponsor some of these scholarships. So on his own, right, uh, Omkar and his wife, Sabrina, uh, along with Google, Omkar is Google, at Google now, uh, has provided the generous SNK scholarship to NYU Cyber Fellow students. Well, Omkar himself, just to give you a background of him, he's an experienced cybersecurity and technical risk management executive. He has led organizations to realize the business goals while effectively managing cybersecurity risk and compliance requirements. Over 17 years of experience, currently he's the engineering director at Google. He had previously served organizations uh, like JP Morgan Chase, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, TD Bank Group, and IBM. And as a senior technology leader, he has revolutionized the, effect, uh, the effectiveness of cybersecurity controls. And he's also uh, accomplished author and has several granted patents that led to contributions to many international standards. So it's really an honor to know you, Ankar, and uh, thank you so much for everything that you've done. Hand over the mic to you. Thank you, Nasser. It's an honor after all these years. Uh, I think the the most humbling title you gave me was friend. So I appreciate that. And even with the crypto course, if it's only reminding you even smarter people in crypto that you already know, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to do so. Um, wow, I, there have been a bunch of extremely talented speakers before me. So um, <laughs> I'm not gonna try and top them, but I will make reference, um, diversity. Diversity is extremely important. Liz, I'm so glad you touched on it. And I'm, I'm glad our friends from Bridgewater touched on it as well. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little story uh, before getting on with the rest of our program. Um, SNK are the initials of my children and they're the inspiration for this. There was one time that I was at work and my daughter came into work and I'm a software engineer by trade that picked up security along the way uh, by way of background. And I was at that time, as now, serving a leadership position in a security engineering team. My daughter came on the floor and she must have been seven, six or seven years old. She looked around, she said, hey, this is where all the people are doing computer stuff and you know, she, images of hackers and things like that. And I said, yeah, baby, this is where they're doing it. She looked at me and she said, where's all the girls? <laughs> and that was so profound and for any of you that are parents, you know, the, the clarity and insight that a seven-year-old brings. So that got me thinking about different ways that we can affect this. And uh, I guess when I joined Google, I, I did a bit of research about what programs were available. And finally, while I will absolutely take credit for all of this, um, the truth is it was it's my wife's permission that allows me to do this. Um, we just decided to get together, partner with Nasser and Jensel and Matt to really get this set up. So the purpose of the SMK Cyberfellow Scholarship is to really help underrepresented women enter cyber engineering. And I love the entire subject matter of cyber. I love how engaged we are. 
But to me, as a fellow that grew up in engineering and hearing that insight from my daughter, it was really important to me to find any way that we can to course correct the lack, the, the inequality that we have in terms of gender diversity within our cyber engineering field. So with that, I believe I now get to name the initial recipients of the SNK scholarship in 2021. We handed these out earlier this year, coincided with Women's History Month. So that was nice. And we hope to do so again next year. Um, Matt, do we want to advance to the first one? So the first is Rebecca Diaz. Congratulations, Rebecca. Uh, Matt, we can move on to the next. The next is Hannah Lavian. Pamela Prasad and Tina Ridley. As, uh, as referenced earlier, you know, in years past, we would have done this face to face and I would have got to meet everyone face to face. I'm super eager to the time that we can do that again. Um, also because NYU puts on a great spread when we do this in person. Um, but for now, I'm going to intro our next speaker, uh, who's Hannah. Hannah's from Queens, New York, just like LL Cool J. Unlike LL Cool J, she recently completed her bachelor's in computer science. This is her second year as a cyber fellow at NYU. She developed an interest in technology when she joined Girls Who Code in high school. She's currently a board member of WESIS, Women in Cybersecurity chapter at NYU, and uh, which she uses to share her passion with cybersecurity with her fellow colleagues. So without further ado, Anna, over to you. Thank you, Omkar, for that warm introduction. And thank you, Omkar, your wife, and I guess your kids as well, and Google for this incredible scholarship. I appreciate your generosity, like, which promotes diversity and cybersecurity, and is with all your efforts that helps transform and elevate the field. Uh, first of all, excuse me for my voice. This is just what happens to me during allergy season. So excuse that. Okay, so a little about myself. One of my sisters is currently studying nursing. Another one is studying for PA, physician assistant. Another one is a teacher. Another one is studying to be a speech therapist. Now there's me. I have a bachelor's in computer science and I am currently an NYU cyber fellow. And the five of us are female first-generation college students. Our mother is from Argentina and our father is from Iran. So none of my sister's friends or my friends have ever met a female studying cybersecurity. Every day when I mention that I'm studying cybersecurity, everyone says what, and they ask twice. So they're always curious to know about like what's involved in computer science in general. So a few of my friends uh, I brought to my attention that they are constantly hearing about careers in tech all over the place, and they have no idea what the job entails at all. So this past year, I held an hour of code event for uh, my sister's friends and my friends where I taught the basics of Python so they can get a sense of what coding is like. Then following that, I was invited to attend the all girls local high school to speak about cybersecurity at their annual career fair. So I'm currently on the board of the newly founded Women in Cybersecurity WISIS chapter at NYU uh, to share my passion for cybersecurity. So, if any of you guys are a female or anyone in general can join the board the, or the become member, uh, please reach out to me or any of the other board members. As a female Latina and Middle Eastern with a network of diverse family and friends, the scholarship will help me forward Tanzan's goal of increased diversity in the cybersecurity workforce. So hopefully with all my efforts, Maybe one of my sisters will change their mind and want to join me as a woman in cybersecurity. This scholarship reminds me that there are constantly people out there rooting for me, whether it be Amkar and his wife or with Bridgewater uh, giving to the other students. So their impact is greatly impacting this field and I am sincerely honored to be its recipient. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Matt, you're taking over? Yes, I will take from here. Thank you, Hannah. Next, I would like to invite Aspen Homestead to introduce our 
2021 NYU Cyber Fellows Academic Achievement Award recipients. Ask You're scroll them across the screen, right? I am, yeah. Okay, good. You don't, you don't have to read them. Okay. <laughs> well, let's give a round of applause for the, these hardworking students um, who have achieved the two, 2021 Academic Achievement Award recipients. Um, I guess there's a applause in our reactions we can do. And they earn to receive this award, you have to complete 15 credits um, and at the end of the spring semester and have a 3.9 cumulative GPA or higher. So some of those folks are continuing. Uh, some of those folks are, are dual recipients of that award. They've been here for two years for that. So congratulations to them and, and thank you, Aspen. Thank you all. And then that concludes our speaking portion of the event. And we ran a little bit over, but that doesn't mean we'll end early. Uh, we still have two breakout sessions if you all uh, hang around after here. But before we, we get to that and I explain those a little bit, I just want to thank all of our speakers, uh, every single one of you, so empowering and so such powerful messages. And we appreciate you taking the time to come join us. Um, tonight, especially those that might be taking an extra, a, extra uh, long holiday weekend. Uh, we appreciate you, you spending the night with us and, and taking the time and also the generosity of, of Bridgewater and of uh, uh, Omkar and all of his uh, and his wife and, and Google. Um, hopefully everyone enjoys the long weekend. Um, we won't have a formal closing after the breakout session, so I'll do that here now. But um, Good luck with the semester. Uh, wish you the best um, for those that are starting, those that are graduating. Um, I'm sure it feels like it took forever to get here, but at the same time, it feels like yesterday, this was your first welcome reception. Um, so thank you for all the continuing students that are here. Thank you for the partners uh, that took the time to come out, all of the staff, all of my colleagues that have helped me put this on. Um, I appreciate all of you as well. And thank you, it couldn't have been done without anyone. Um, without everyone in this room. So uh, for what we'll do here is we'll have breakout rooms. Um, so there are these breakout rooms with faculty happening and there'll be two different sessions and you will be able to select the breakout room you go to yourself. Um, the host will be automatically sent to those rooms. Um, and then as the, the guests, you could jump in and ask questions and, and meet folks that might be in the course or have questions about the course. We also have some other sessions that aren't academic related um, and have some staff and students available to for you to be able to connect with and get to know um, and ask any questions you might might have. Uh, you could also feel free to, to hang around in the main room and mingle with each other if if you prefer to do that as well, the main room will be here. You can come and go uh, and jump in and out of rooms after 15 minutes. The first session will automatically end similar to the speed networking. Um, and you'll get uh, get sent back to the main room and then we'll just reopen them and you could either rejoin the same room or rejoin a different room. Uh, but that way you, you are able to at least go to at least two rooms, but feel free to jump out at any point um, in between if you want to meet with a few different folks. So with that said, I'm going to stop the recording and we will open up those breakout rooms. If anyone has questions, there'll be folks.